What's up guys, welcome to the first episode of Up To Speed, which is essentially a segment of my channel where I'm going to be talking about the latest in car news, as well as tech. So expect to see, I'm still trying to figure out exactly when I'm going to be putting these out, but expect to see a bunch more of these coming out more often. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I'm going to start off with the CT5V Blackwing. So, although most of this video is going to be electric related, um, I figured I'd start off with probably one of the most gas guzzling vehicles that's going to be coming out soon. And it is the CT5V Blackwing from Cadillac. So it's coming out in 2021. The thing that I'm excited about the most is the fact that it's stick shift. I feel like it's rare to see cars that are stick shift in this day and age. But overall, I just figured I'd share this because it's a car coming out soon and it's another stick shift vehicle. <laughs> Hashtag save the manuals. But yeah, I mean, that's that for this vehicle. I'm gonna move on to the next piece of news. And we've more recently heard that Elon Musk is planning on still <clears throat> coming out with robo taxis later this year. Um, that's something I'm kind of trying to figure out like exactly what that's going to entail um but more than that is this company called navia and i might be saying it wrong but it's a french-based company this is a company that produces um <clears throat> produces autonomous vehicles that are used to currently carry a coronavirus testing from like one facility to another at least from what, what we're hearing more recently it seems like the company is looking to create a way to deliver mail without needing people so essentially you're gonna have robots delivering your <clears throat> delivering your mail for you again something we're yet to find out a lot more about but it's pretty exciting because I feel like a lot of people whether it be people who are nurses, doctors, or people who work in the food industry, or even people who deliver products, I feel like they're putting themselves at risk. So really anything that makes it easier to get one thing from one place to another without risking human health is always a big plus. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about the Polestar 2. So if you guys are familiar with uh, Volvo or have been following, they recently came out with a Polestar, well, first of all, they came with the Polestar 1, which is like a sub-brand of Volvo, which essentially just makes electric or hybrid vehicles. So the Polestar 1 is a hybrid vehicle, and they're coming out with the Polestar 2, which is going to be fully electric, and it's supposed to be coming out later this year, and we're sort of going to see how that pans out with the whole pandemic situation. However, it's going to be competing with the Tesla Model 3, uh, Tesla Model Y. So price-wise, it's going to be right around the four. Well, it's going to be starting at sixty. Um, but prepare that, like, if you were to get one, prepare to spend like close to seventy thousand um, dollars. Whereas the Tesla Model Three is about forty, and the Tesla Model Y, which it's competing with, is going to be around the the high fifties, maybe low sixty thousand dollar range. But then again, this is also the first time they're doing electric vehicles. And it's almost guaranteed that there are going to be some issues to sort of navigate around before you come to a product that's like consistently performing the way you want it to. Overall, I feel like it's a pretty exciting time for electric vehicles. <laughs> Granted, uh, with the whole pandemic, a lot of um, vehicles to be released this year, um, or at least early this year, are getting pushed back to later in the year or getting pushed back to next year. But overall, there's a lot coming out. So you have the e-tron from Audi. Oh, Lamborghini's coming out with an electric vehicle, like a fully electric vehicle, apparently. Again, we're yet to find out more about that. And then you have the Taycan, which also is like a hundred and something thousand dollars. You have the Turbo, Turbo S, and you have the base model. But something cheaper is the Ford Mach-E. And I did talk about this a while ago. It's going to be around $40,000. A lot of purists may say that they're not a fan of the fact that they're using the mach um, name because it sort of goes off the I believe the Mach 1 Mustang and it sort of has a similar but kind of different styling so people aren't really a fan of that but I feel like for me I like electric vehicles 
and it's probably likely that within the next 10, 20, maybe 30 years, a lot more people are gonna be on the electric vehicle train. But again, we kind of don't know how things are gonna pan out because of course the pandemic has pushed things back and who knows whatever is gonna happen in the future. But either way, overall, there's some pretty decent vehicles that are coming to the market that are electric. And I assume that within like the next 10 to 20 years, <clears throat> Prices are also going to go. Prices are also going to go down mainly because there's just more electric vehicles in the market. So again, that's something to look out for. That's something I'm pretty excited about. And that's that for this episode. So I figured I would keep it pretty short, but because it's the first episode, and I didn't want to like throw out like 20 different pieces of information. However, if you guys want me to do more, let me know. If you want me to keep it to like one to two, also let me know. Um, but that's that for this video guys. If you enjoyed it, share it, like it, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.